Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will see the frequency response of the op-amp and we will also understand what is the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp and what is the significance of this gain bandwidth product. So these two parameters are very important aspect of any op-amp and it is quite often used by the designers for selecting a specific op-amp for any particular application. So let us first of all see the frequency response of the op-amp. Now so far, we have assumed that the gain of the op-amp is very high and it is having a very high bandwidth and we have assumed that the gain of the op-amp is constant up to the certain band of frequencies but if you see the actual response then the actual response of the op-amp will look like this that means the gain of the op-amp will be constant up to certain frequencies and if we go beyond this frequency then the gain of the op-amp will reduce at the constant rate of minus 20 db per decade so this frequency is known as the cutoff frequency of the op-amp. So the cutoff frequency is the frequency where the gain of the op-amp will reduce by a 3 dB. Now in this frequency response here the y-axis represents the voltage gain of the op-amp and the x-axis represents the frequency in a logarithmic scale. So in this frequency response if you see the cutoff frequency of the op-amp is very low and it used to be in the range of 10 to 100 Hz. So up to this frequency only op-amp will have a very high gain. So we can say that in open loop configuration the bandwidth of the op-amp is very low and that is because all the op-amps which we are using today are internally compensated. That means all the op-amps which we are using are having an internal compensation capacitor. So this internal compensation capacitor ensures that the op-amp has a stable response at high frequencies. So now because of this internal compensation capacitor the op-amp will have a single break frequency till the point the gain of the op-amp reaches the unity. So the frequency where the gain of the op-amp is unity is known as the unity gain frequency. So because of this kind of response, we can predict the gain of the op-amp at any given frequency. Or in another way, suppose if we know the gain of the op-amp, then we can predict the frequency of operation. And that is particularly useful when we are using the op-amp in a closed loop configuration. So now suppose if op-amp is not internally compensated, in that case, you can have a multiple break frequencies till the point the gain of the op-amp reaches the unity gain frequency. And these multiple break frequencies can occur because of the stray capacitances and the load capacitances. So because of these break frequencies, op-amp will become unstable at very high frequencies. So that is the reason all the op-amps are internally compensated. And because of that, the open loop bandwidth of the op-amp is very low. So because of this internal compensation, it is easy to predict the gain of the op-amp if we know the frequency of operation or in another way, if we know the gain of the op-amp, then it is easy to identify the frequency of operation and that is particularly true when we are operating the op-amp in this particular region because in this region, the product of gain and the frequency is constant and that is known as the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp. So let's say if you are operating the op-amp at unity gain frequency, then the frequency of operation will be equal to 1 megahertz and at that frequency the gain of the op-amp is 1. So the product of this frequency and gain will be equal to 1 megahertz. Similarly, let's say if you are operating the op-amp at this cutoff frequency fc, in that case the gain of the op-amp is 10 to the power 5. So again the gain and the frequency product will be equal to 1 megahertz. So as you can see in this particular region product of gain and op-amp is constant and that is known as the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp and it will always be equal to unity gain frequency of the op-amp. So using this gain bandwidth product, it is easy to identify the cutoff frequency of the op-amp whenever it is being used in the closed loop configuration. So let us say we are using this op-amp in a closed loop configuration and we have set the gain of op-amp as a 40 dB which corresponds to 100. So if you see the frequency response, in frequency response we will get a constant gain of 40 dB till the point this scale line intersects the open loop gain response of the op-amp and beyond this intersection point the response of the op-amp will be similar to the open loop response of the op-amp and this intersection point is known as the cutoff frequency of the op-amp. So below this cutoff frequency the gain of the op-amp will be constant. So in this way whenever we are using the op-amp in a closed loop configuration then we can get a higher bandwidth and we can find the bandwidth or the cutoff frequency in a closed loop configuration by using this gain bandwidth product. So for this particular response, we know that the unity gain frequency or the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp is 10 to the power 6 hertz. And we also know that the product of this closed loop gain 
and the cutoff frequency will be constant and it will be equal to the gain when net product of the op amp so from this we can find the cutoff frequency of the op amp which will be equal to this unity gain frequency divided by the closed loop gain of the op amp so in this particular case it will come out as a 10 kilohertz so in this way whenever we are using the op amp in a closed loop configuration then in that configuration for the given gain we can find the cutoff frequency of the op amp so up to that cutoff frequency the gain of the op amp will remain the constant now this relation is particularly true whenever we are using the op amp in a non inverting configuration so for the non inverting configuration if you see the unity gain frequency or the gain when net product can be given by the expression closed loop gain multiplied by the cutoff frequency of the op amp and for the inverting op amp configuration this gain when net product can be given by the expression this closed loop gain plus 1 multiplied by the cutoff frequency of the op amp so for the derivation of these equations i will provide the separate note in the description very soon so you can check that out now here if you see whenever the gain of op amp is very high in that case the cutoff frequency fc will be equal to unity gain frequency but whenever this closed loop gain is very low in that case the cutoff frequency for the inverting and the non inverting configuration will be different so let us take the worst case whenever the closed loop gain of the op amp is 1 so let us say we are using the op amp in a inverting configuration and we have set the gain of op amp to the unity so in that case if you see the cutoff frequency of the op amp will be equal to unity gain frequency divided by 2 while in case of the non inverting configuration if we set the gain to the unity in that case the cutoff frequency will be equal to the unity gain frequency so whenever the gain of the op amp is very low in that case it is advisable to use the non inverting configuration over the inverting configuration so now let us take one example based on this gain when net product so here we are using this op amp in a non inverting configuration and for this configuration we need the closed loop gain of 100 and here we have been given this unity gain frequency that is equal to 1 megahertz and we want to find the cutoff frequency fc for this configuration so we already know that for the non inverting configuration the cutoff frequency fc will be equal to the unity gain frequency divided by the closed loop gain of the op amp so here the cutoff frequency fc will come out as a 10 kilohertz so we can say that for this configuration the gain of the op amp will be constant up to this 10 kilohertz frequency or we can say that the bandwidth of the op amp will be equal to 10 kilohertz but now suppose in your application if you want a higher bandwidth then what we can do either we can select a op amp which is having a very high gain bandwidth product or we can use the multiple stages of op amp and we can distribute the gain of op amp between these two op amp so let's say here we are distributing the gain of 100 between these two op amp and here both the op amps are identical that means the gain when net product of both the op amp will be equal so if we take the first stage in the first stage the cutoff frequency of the op amp will be equal to the gain when net product divided by the closed loop gain of the op amp and here we are assuming that the gain when net product of the op amp is 1 megahertz so if you calculate then the cutoff frequency will come out as a 100 kilohertz in same is true for the second stage so here the both the stages will have a cutoff frequency of 100 kilohertz the overall cutoff frequency of the op amp will be equal to the cutoff frequency multiplied by the 2 to the power 1 by n minus 1 where n represents the number of stages which is being included in this system so here n is equal to 2 and the cutoff frequency fc of the op amp is 100 kilohertz so if you put all these values then closed loop cutoff frequency of the op amp will come out approximately as a 64 kilohertz so in this way by using the multiple stages of identical op amp we can increase the bandwidth of the op amp while keeping the same gain so this is all about the gain when net product of the op amp so i hope in this video you understood about the frequency response and the gain when net product of the op amp so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos